So with the recently released Resolve 20, we got a separate split tone effect to use in the color page. So today we're gonna to break down what it is, how it works, and in my opinion, a far better way of split toning with a DCTL that has a few extra features that really come in handy when going for a split tone in your image. Let's dive in. So before we get into the actual effect here, first off, what is split toning? Split toning just refers to pushing certain hues into the shadows and the highlights of our image. And these hues are usually complementary, just to create a bit of extra color contrast. And most of the time you'll see cooler colors pushed into the shadows and warmer colors pushed into the highlights. That's only because it's a bit more pleasing to the eye and it just makes a bit more sense as we see that most often in the real world. Okay, so we're here in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a shot here from a recent short film. Straight away, I'm gonna go into our open effects panel up here and search for split tone. You can see that comes up as a separate effect. Now, it originally was part of the Film Look Creator that DaVinci Resolve released sometime last year, I think. But now they've released it as a bit more of a fully fleshed out separate OFX plugin. And you can see straight away, it's thrown on a default split tone to image. If we turn that off and on with Control D, you can see it's adding a warmer yellow hue to our highlights. It's introducing a bit of a cooler green uh, kind of teal in the shadows. Now, first thing to note is we have three different modes with this one. We have a natural mode, a strong mode, and a custom mode. That lets us get a bit more control over which hues we're pushing into each image and how strongly. So we're gonna stick with natural for now. Let's go over some of the controls. So our first slider here is strength, which is fairly self-explanatory. You see if we lower it, it has no effect, and we can take the effect all the way up to 100%. You can see it's now pushing in some warmer colors into our highlights and those cooler colors into our shadows. Now the pivot is essentially where split tone separates what it perceives as shadows and highlights. So if the pivot is lower, it takes more of the image as highlights and less of the image as shadows and vice versa. So you can control where you'd like that separation between shadows and highlights to be. Now our hue angle is where we decide what complementary hues we want to inject into the highlights and the shadows. You can see if we slide this around, we start getting different hues pushing into the shadows and the highlights. So checking preview influence highlights what exact colors it's pushing into our highlights and our shadows by giving us this visual representation here. You can see if we pull down our strength and increase it, you can see what kind of colors it's adding to our image overall. And it's a good way of getting a better idea of what colors you're pushing in. If we slide this hue angle around, you can see exactly what colors are going where. So if we wanted a teal and orange look, we just shuffle this slider around until we get those oranges in the highlights and the teals in the shadows. The last checkbox we have here is protect neutrals. And by turning that on, we are just telling the split tone effect to not affect what is pure white and what is pure black in our image, therefore protecting our less saturated parts and keeping our whites white and our blacks black. So there's also a strong setting as well, which really pushes those colors quite aggressively. You can see just how crazy that is. It's almost eliminating every other color and just giving a, a two-tone color wash over the whole image. I haven't really found a use for this strong setting yet because it's kind of intense. What I have found a huge use for is the custom split tone mode. So you'll see we get two extra settings here, one for shadows and one for highlights. So now we get to choose which hue we put into our shadows and which hue we put into our highlights separately, which is great in any circumstances where you don't want a perfect complementary color palette in your split tone. We can dial in our shadows by increasing the strength, choosing which hue we want in our shadows, going for something a little green, and then pulling the strength of the highlights up. Now we can adjust the hues of our highlights. Now while green and yellow aren't complementary colors on the color wheel, they do present a really nice warm and cool split tone effect. So it's nice to have the option to not always go complementary with the split toning. We also get a bit more control over protecting our neutrals, which is just letting us control the maximum and minimum saturation that the split tone will not affect. Now, before I get to the mystery DCTL that I think does a much better job of split toning than the inbuilt split tone effect in DaVinci Resolve, I just wanna give a quick shout out to Motion VFX. All the assets and the graphics and the overlays that you're seeing in this video and all of my YouTube videos at the moment have come from Motion VFX. They've got some great sales on, especially with bundles at the moment to save a bit of money. But I've been using them in all of my YouTube work and now even some corporate work that I've been doing. So 
really helpful tools. There is an affiliate link down in the description, which just means I get a small commission of every sale through that link. So you're just supporting the channel as well as getting some great editing assets for yourself. But let's get to that DCTL. So I'm going to turn our split turn node off. I'm gonna make a new node with Alt S and I'm gonna hit Command Space to bring up this new effect search window that we have in Resolve 20.2, I think it was. We're gonna drop that on. And this is a paid DCTL from Pixel Tools. They sell a bunch of great color grading DCTLs for DaVinci Resolve. And I've done a fully fledged video on some of their split tone DCTLs, but we're going to scroll down to our Pixel Tools selection in our DCTL list here. And I'm going to go with the Hue Basic. Again, if you wanna go deeper into all the split tone tools that Pixel Tools offer, I'll link that up in the top right there so you can check that video out. So to really appreciate just how good this split tone DCTL is, I think we need to talk about what I felt was missing from the split tone effect in Resolve natively. The first is that it's a little tricky to know which exact hues you're pushing into the image. There is no clear visual representation of which hues you have selected. It's kind of just push it into the image, see what color it is, and then just drag the little slider around. The second was that I found the cutoff between the shadows and the highlights to be a little harsh sometimes. When you move the pivot around, you can really see a clear differentiation between what it considers the shadows and the highlights. I thought it was a little too harsh. And the third one was the way it preserves or protects the neutrals in the image is a little confusing, especially with the two minimum and maximum saturation sliders. That was another thing I didn't really like about it was that it worked in a saturation method of protecting the neutrals, whereas this DCTL from Pixel Tools works by preserving the blacks and the whites of your image, not just the lower saturation parts. It also does saturation, but I do like having the choice to not inject colors so strongly into the pure blacks and the pure white points. So the first thing you'll notice with this DCTL is just how much control we get over our split tone. Now, as I said, I've gone through this super in detail in another video, which is also linked down in the description. But just for an overview, we have our high and low strength, which already I feel is so much more natural than the split tone effect native in Resolve. We get individual hue controls, which is great. We had that in the native split tone effect. What we didn't have were some of these checkers down here. And my two favorite ones are show patches and show curves. So you can see now in the bottom right of our image, we have a very clear indication of which two colors are getting injected into our shadows and our highlights. We're also getting a visual representation of that on our split tone curve up here. Just like if we're using the custom curves we have in Resolve, we get a clear indication of where our pivot is. We have options for cleaning our blacks and cleaning our whites. So there's just less effect up towards the higher and the lower ends of our curve. We can still use a saturation mask. So you can see, especially in our lower saturation, bright parts of the image, it's removing its effect in those lower saturation areas. But we can also choose how strongly to protect our neutrals around our pivot. Since if we slide this up, it has less effect around whatever we select as the distinction between our shadows and our highlights. So overall, just a whole lot more control with this DCTL that I don't think the native split tone in Resolve has gotten to yet, hopefully one day. But at the moment, I really enjoy having this level of creative control over the split tone that I use when I'm building out my looks. Now, there are plenty of other split toning DCTLs out there. This is just the one I happen to be a huge fan of. Now, if you haven't really done split toning before, I would still highly recommend using the native Resolve split toning just to get an idea and a feel for what split toning does to your image. And once you get kind of a better grasp of what split toning really is, then maybe you'll consider buying a DCTL from someone like Pixel Tools that create really awesome and really pleasing split tone effects. If you do wanna buy this DCTL, there is an affiliate link down in the description. I just earned a small commission from any sales through that, so it helps support the channel as well. We also got a new cinematic haze effect built into DaVinci Resolve, utilizing depth map and light rays, and a few of its other effects all built into one haze or fog effect. So if you'd like to see me cover that in a future video, let me know down in the comments. But other than that, that's it from me today. Have a good one.